Hello, I'm not a real crab, and from now on I will be your guide on this new unexplored planet, so welcome to. Eden is a distant planet, 0.72 times the size of Earth, with a radius of approximately 4,500 kilometers, and an axial tilt of 8.29 degrees. Its day-night cycle is about 31 hours, and it takes about 295 days to complete one orbit around the Sun. The distance from its star is shorter than Earth's, resulting in a much drier planet, which, along with the water bodies confined to a single region, makes life here quite difficult. These conditions have given rise to areas considered refuges. The most characteristic of all would be the Garden of Eden, the largest cluster of biomass on the planet, with up to half of all species located here, and a host of unique ecorgeons. Due to the planet's age, geological activity has been decreasing over time, until now it is practically non-existent, making earthquakes, tremors, and volcanic eruptions extremely rare and improbable events. What has remained active is the climate itself. In the south, rainfall is scarce or non-existent, while in more northern areas, there are places where it never stops raining, along with very powerful winds that move and generate terrible thunderstorms on the coasts, while further inland, sandstorms are an almost daily occurrence. Areas far from water may appear completely dead, but there are many hidden ecosystems, such as those found under large cracks that have formed after the separation of tectonic plates, or in caves and aquifers that may have been isolated for millions of years. The Dilet Peninsula is made up of small, clear forests and deserts within. It is one of the areas most inhabited by megafaunal organisms, as it presents an open ecosystem with abundant resources. Others, such as the aforementioned Garden of Eden, are composed of forests mostly sealed off from each other, which beneath them have created a system of organic caves inhabited by many organisms. The Acti Range is an ecosystem surrounded by mountains, with many islands at its center. It could be the equivalent of the Caribbean, only much larger. The Rogni Desert is an ecosystem that has been deprived of rainfall for millions of years. To the south of it lies the Rogni Mountain Range, which, due to the presence of rivers and lakes nearby, has become home and a point of interest for many organisms. The last and largest mountain range in Eden, the Chorismos, is a mountainous formation that formed after the collision of the tectonic plates of both seas, separating them and creating a chain reaction of earthquakes, eruptions, and gas releases that led to one of the worst mass extinctions on the planet. The Deca Islands are the largest of all the planet's archipelagos. Its main island even has an internal desert. On the other hand, the Gabbana Islands are battered by constant gales, which have forced the organisms present here to adapt to not being blown away, developing all kinds of unique characteristics. The Heart of Gaia, or the Heart of Eden, is the oldest island on the planet, having appeared 450 million years ago, where it has always maintained a biota completely separate from the rest of Eden. Leaving the islands behind, we can find the shoreline. This is a collection of various ecosystems, shaped by millions of years of rain and wind, the most extensive being the stormy coast. Several kilometers inland, we find the boreal desert, blessed with monthly rainfall, few survive here. We can also find the gap, a depression filled with canyons and cave systems, formed by the separation of tectonic plates. It has a unique ecosystem full of highly adapted extremophiles. On the other hand, the southern desert is much drier, as rain rarely reaches here, and there is zero biomass. The Rogni Pool, similar to the Gap, is a canyon-shaped depression. It receives almost no rain, sustaining it on frozen water from the glacier in the south of the planet, which forms frozen rivers. Finally, there are the oceans. We can find too, the Loiponian Ocean, the largest and most diverse in ecosystems, and the Paralien Ocean, with shallow, very warm waters rich in nutrients and minerals. To begin with the native organisms of Eden, we'll talk about Polystomata, one of the planet's most distinctive phylum, which comprise the majority of surface heterotrophic species, beginning with how they originated. Its beginnings date back more than 710 million years, with radial organisms similar to sea dollars, which, unlike modern organisms, appear to lack their characteristic mouths, which suggests two possible theories. The first is that the most primitive Polystomata had mouths on each of their legs, collecting detritus and other nutrients from the seafloor. 
The other option, and the one most accepted among the scientific community, is that they use their current anus as the only orifice connected to their stomach, similar to cnidarians. The anatomy of this phylum is highly complex and varied, its main characteristic being the presence of two or more mouths, usually made up of two radulae each, which are used to crush, move, and swallow food. They also lack cephalization, or only partially cephalization, and have complex sensory organs found throughout their bodies. The most basal forms, non-ossified ones, depend on water and are less diverse. Currently, we divide non-ossified polystomata into three classes, actinicostomata, which usually exhibit radial symmetry in multiple mouths, bisphaly, with one mouth at each end and a single anus in the middle, and biastomata, which are more cephalizade and have two mouths like radulae, but still have sensory organs at the other end of their bodies. Actinicostomes are one of the most primitive clades of polystomates, typically exhibiting radial symmetry, moving sideways and grasping food with their mandibular arms that extend across their bodies. They often have several sensory structures that help them detect their surroundings, as their eyes are very simple and tend to focus upward. They are composed of a single lens with several receptors underneath, which can capture a small fraction of their surroundings. This is why actinicostomes often have dozens or even hundreds of these eyes scattered along their bodies, which together allow them to form a clear image. Bicep halia is another of the polystomate clades. With some 4,500 recorded species, they are the most diverse of the non-ossified polystomates. These organisms are characterized by the presence of what appear to be two complex heads, each exactly the same on the outside, with the same number of eyes and jaw, as well as electroperception organs and the ability to move in both directions, depending on what the organism needs. However, several anatomical studies have discovered that the brain in each of the heads is different. One extreme has a complex brain more similar to that of fish, while the other head has a modified cerebellum adapted to more complex functions, which works with another subcerebellum to coordinate and achieve the same functions and complexity as the original brain. Biestimata is the last clade of non-ossified polystomates left to study. They are characterized by their bilateral symmetry, the presence of complex eyes at each end of their body, along with a more complex respiratory system similar to that of fish, which allows them to reach larger sizes than other more basal groups. This improvised respiratory system is formed by two spiracles connected to one of the mouths, creating a flow of water from which oxygen is extracted. The modification of their reproductive system, along with the presence of eyes, gives them the appearance of a second head, which, together with the regenerative capacities of these species, makes them difficult to distinguish, giving them a chance of surviving attacks by predators. Very characteristic species such as Catapiniamus rufus, one of the most common and widespread, endemic to the Loiponian Ocean, are primarily carnivores of small organisms, while species such as Neridolaris are simpler and smaller, with niches similar to those of starfish and other echinoderms. Despite being such different animals separated by millions and millions of years, both share a key characteristic, electroperception. It's very common in all species of this group and serves many purposes. However, terrestrial species, ossified polystomates, have largely lost it, gaining in exchange other traits that we'll see in the future. Among bistomates, we find the superclass at Semnitha, a clade of polystomates that do have internal bone structures. These are formed primarily of silica, very common in the planet's water. These bones are divided into a cephalothorax, where many of the vital organs are housed, along with an abdomen composed of internalized bone plates that function as a large rib cage, in addition to a second skull at the end of the body. The beginning of this group dates back almost 600 million years, the estimated date when Protopoda tsilaniensis, the oldest at Semnifus to date, lived. It has a transitional form, with poorly specialized bones, along with limbs more similar to those of primitive bistomates than to today's articulated limbs. In the next video, we'll talk about one of the strangest ecosystems in Eden. The Stormy Coast.